Hello, everybody. Uh, the uh, on this uh, what is this Sunday? Beautiful Sunday night. <laughs> uh, wife and baby are out with some friends, uh, and I did my chores I was supposed to do. <laughs> so I am on to share with you all some of my uh, new finds. Very exciting. Very exciting indeed. Um, but but first, I just wanted to give a, a quick thanks. Quick thanks to Mr. Uh, Matthew Robinson, uh, Plastic Ono fan. Uh, Crate Junkies on the Facebook page recently did a, a, a trading bin, and I had uh, two two Pat Metheny records that I found at Goodwill, but I already had them, and I got them intending to trade them or give them off as a VCLT. So. Uh, posted those on, Matt said he'd be interested, and we did a quick trade, which is cool because it's the first trade I've ever done, <laughs> believe it or not. I've had people uh, offer to do trades in the past and stuff, but I, I never took them, but first trade I've ever done. And he sent me uh, these two. Uh, first one we got is a Herbie Hancock, uh, Feats Don't Fail Me Now. Uh, haven't had a chance to spin this one yet, so I <laughs> can't really say much. But this one I have, and it is just excellent. Uh, Mo Mobo 2, uh, how, how do you pronounce the name? Kaz Kazumi Watanabe? Watanabe? Off of uh, Gramavision. Great 80s label. Great 80s label. Uh, and the music, you could tell it's out of the 80s. Some of that, you know, cheesy synthesizer sound. But the playing is just phenomenal. Very creative. Really, really enjoyed this one. So, you know, Matt. Plastic Ono fan, thank you very much for those, <laughs> you know, great doing business with you. <laughs> so, uh, definitely cool, definitely cool doing trades. And uh, I mean, you know, If anybody ever wants to do trade with me, just holler. Maybe I got doubles or something. Who knows? Uh, but, onward, what you're hearing, slowly starting up in the background. <laughs> But you can't find it, so there will be a link at the bottom. Ayahuasca Dark Trip, Mind Journey. Look at that artwork. That is gorgeous artwork off of uh, Cosmic Eye Records. <laughs> Mr. Nathan Morales can enjoy that. This was a band can't find, like I said, but I had found it like over a year ago probably, but they had only for a download. They didn't have a CD or vinyl or nothing. It was just a download, and I was like, oh, oh well, you know, I'm not going to bother with it, even though I really enjoyed it. Uh, but then I had fallen upon it by happenstance, accident, and turns out that they had a vinyl release through a, a label. I was like, whoa! So I went on and got it. Uh, Cosmic Eye, uh, uh, Cosmic Eye, and uh, uh, Sound Effects Records uh, had to get it out of Greece, so it was a little bit of money. But, in my opinion, well worth it. You can hear it coming in, uh, trippy, uh, you know, psychedelic, <laughs> you know, cosmic space rock, uh, but with, like, a doom edge to it. There's de some definite, uh, you know, doom metal in there. Especially the first side with uh, the opening track, Astral Sunset. Really, really feel that there's a, there's a metal influence on this. And it came with a cover, cover, came with a poster, which is just basically the cover. And I know they're from Europe, but I couldn't tell you where. I want to say from the names <laughs> that they're either going to be uh, German or maybe Dutch. I mean, Morecamp and Benroy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Bu bu uh, bu uh, bucket. <laughs> they def definitely sounds uh, you know somewhere along those lines. But great, great band with some killer music, and that's why I got it playing in the background. Sorry, I got to talk over it. <laughs> uh, these next next three I got are off About Time uh, record label, which I actually went online and I contacted them. They have a website, which is like nothing other than a website. It's weird. You can't buy anything. They don't have a shop. It's just there. So I was like, okay. So I messaged them and asked if they had any vinyl still available. And the guy wrote back and said that he had plenty of it. 
plenty of CDs and vinyl still available. Uh, about Time Records, they only had like seven releases, I think. Seven or eight releases. Nine, something like that. Some very small amount. But he, he directed me towards, uh, uh, what's it called? Dusty Groove. So I went on there and I found they had three available, three, three available, and they were eight bucks. So it was the cheapest place I could find for a new copy, <laughs> you know, it's still sealed. But uh, pick these up, uh, Henry Threadgill, Sextet, what is this one? Subject to change. I have not had an opportunity to spin these yet. And uh, when was that? Also Henry, Henry Threadgill. Uh, then the unpredictability of predictability. Uh, Mr. Jerome Cooper. I dropped a needle on uh, one of the sides of this and it was fantastic. Uh, all just solo drums with uh, marimba, a little bit, just percussion and some flute. Really good. Really damn good. I, I want to say it's all improvised, but I couldn't tell you to be <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, pick this one up. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, it's a reissue, but you know, whatever. Uh, Philip Upchurch, fantastic Upchurch album. Uh, these, 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 these two I got off another website called Jazz Record Mart. Jazz Record Mart. Uh, this one is horribly, unbelievably bad cover. This cover is so cheesy. Uh, Keshevan, uh, Ke Keshevan, uh, Ken Kenny Millions, better and better. Uh, Keshevan uh, Masluck. I know because he, he played he played with uh, Loke Dicker from the Waterland Ensemble, who I was raving about a few videos ago. <laughs> but I, I came across this and, and I had to pick it up because it's Keshavan. Great saxophone player. But I remember looking at the cover, I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it is so bad. It is so bad. But I haven't spun it, so I can't tell you what it's like. But came off of uh, Leo Records in 87, and it was actually recorded in Miami, so, you know, it's a Florida album. <laughs> Go figure. And then also in Jazz Record Mark, this is a fucking steal! Bard Hersey and the Year of the Ear. I picked up a couple copies of this. Bard Hersey and the Year of the Ear. Uh, uh, Year of the Ear, Bard Hersey's first album. Uh, private press off of Bent Records, his own label. Still sealed, they had this for five dollars. Five dollars! That is a steal! So if you like Bert Hershey at all, or even you know Dave Liebman and you need this record, uh, I'm you're not gonna find it anywhere cheaper unless you find it in a dollar bin somewhere. I mean, you know, for a brand new still sealed copy, that is a steal. The album itself is phenomenal. Uh, jazz fusion, just funk and rocky. Unbelievably fantastic. Sort of like a medium big band. There's like 12 people playing or something like that. And Dave Liebman, of course, shines through it. Just totally. Uh, the one thing I don't like, the opening track, they do a cover of Night in Tunisia. Horrible. Horrible. I don't like it at all. The rest of the album is unbelievably good. <laughs> don't let that disturb you. Pick it up. JazzRecordMark.com Oh, this next one, uh, somebody, can't remember who, somebody had posted it on the Facebook page, and it definitely looked interesting, and I did some research, and I was like, woo, gotta have it, so I picked this one up, Sunflare Ghetto Blast, this is some mind-blowing and mind-bending, distorted, heavy noise, psychedelic acid rock, just Long jams covers the whole side, loud and noisy as fuck. I mean, it is like Acid Mother's Temple extreme. That's what this is. That's how I would call it. And it came with some beautifully sexy <laughs> sky blue vinyl. Really damn good album. I mean, just loud, busting your head open. <laughs> That's what it is. It is intense music. Uh, I bought it straight from the label, uh, Batshit Records. <laughs> Batshit. Batshit Records, believe it or not. So, you know, definitely, definitely cool score. And I have some, some one of you guys to thank, but can't remember who. Sorry. Very cool to get that one. 
this one I've been wanting for years. Ever since I first started collecting, uh, uh, about four years ago probably, at this point, uh, I had stumbled across this, this artist, and I've been wanting this record, his first solo release, ever since then, and I could not get my hands on it. It goes for so much money. Anytime I would see it, or I'd put a bid in for it on eBay, it just, it went for like over a hundred dollars. I was like, are you kidding me? But finally got this one. Oh, this beautiful album. Vitas Brenner, his first solo release, uh, La Ofrenda de Vitas. And it is a beautiful, beautiful gatefold. Look at that artwork. Oh, that is gorgeous. Really, really enjoyed this album. Uh, Kaitas Brenner, uh, I know I've talked about him before, so I'm not going to say much. I'm just going to say this album is is a prog <laughs> masterpiece. Uh, I should say a prog South American masterpiece. Uh, something that not a lot of people know about, but a rare record. And I got it for uh, $45 with shipping, which is expensive, but it's the right price for this record. I'll put it that way. It's definitely the right price for this record. I'm just so happy I finally got this. Uh, I don't know how to describe this music very well, but it, he blends, uh, you know, classical with uh, traditional world music with, you know, electronic and rock. <laughs> you know, just all around phenomenal, just gem, 10 of a record. <laughs> So happy I finally got this. And the artwork is just, again, gorgeous. This was a band camp find, this next one. Uh, there will be a link at the bottom. The Geordie Approach, in a tween. This album came from Europe, so it was a little bit of money, but I pre-ordered it because it was just so damn good. It is sort of like an electro free jazz psychedelic record. <laughs> heavy, heavy use of electronics with uh, saxophone, guitar, and drums. And it is definitely free jazz, improvised, scattered all over the place. And the guitar is just heavy, you know, heavy distorted fuzz guitar. Killer album. Really damn good. Uh, the closing track. Uh, no, no, no. The opening track on side A, The Candidate starts out with this beautiful sort of electronic piece that just sort of like pulsating vibrating thing and then the drums kick in and the guitar at the end probably my favorite track on the whole damn album but the whole album itself is killer definitely check it out there will be a link at the bottom for you guys alrighty alrighty the last three I got oh no let's do this one first I uh, picked up the earthless single the new earthless single just a, a, a live uh, recording. I want to say it's all one long track that fills both sides. Came off of a purple vinyl. The recording itself is a little weird, I think, because it's just sort of like a, a live track that they recorded and they just sort of cut in on one side and faded out and then cut in on the other side and fade it out again. It, it's not like there's any beginning or real end to it. It's just a jam. Which I think is perfect for them, but I mean, it's almost like for a 7-inch, <laughs> you know? It's like, you know, Earthless needs to do you know, a full length. <laughs> so, but it definitely seems a little uh, sacrilegious there for an Earthless fan, but overall, I mean, definitely cool to have. I keep waiting for them to come out with a new album, and I'm really hoping it will be soon. You know, I don't know what they're doing. They've just, the band itself just sort of been laying around. <laughs> you know, Isaiah Mitchell's been doing a uh, Golden Void, and he did some work with another band I can't remember, but whatever. Eventually, hopefully, there will soon be another Earthless album, and if it's on vinyl, you damn well know I'm picking it up. <laughs> Love me some Earthless. So now, the last three. Last three we picked up. Acid Mother's Temple. Definitely went a little buck wild and picked up some Acid Mother's Temple. Uh, first one we got to show. Won this on off eBay. It was under 20 bucks for shipping. So I was thrilled. 
In Sea off of uh, Eclipse Records. Uh, I think it's 2003, I think. I don't know, it doesn't say anywhere. But this is a, uh, the In Sea, they do a cover of uh, Terry Riley's In Sea. And the back side, they have their own song. Damn good album. I only listened to the NC side so far. I haven't actually gotten to the Acid Mother side, but it's it's definitely cool to see them or hear them rather playing tribute to uh, you know one of their uh, I don't know if I want to call them one of their influences, but you know probably one of their heroes for them to make an album where they're you know they're covering one full track. Very cool release to get for that. Always love Acid Mother's Temple. And this one has been out for a while, been out for like a year off of a Prophase Music, a reissue of La Novia. But I just haven't gotten around to getting it until now. So, <laughs> very cool. Came off of some sort of poop brown mustard splatter, if you would. The album itself, they're covering a uh, traditional uh, French song, La Novia, and it, it starts out real slow, and there's this mellow build that comes out, but they they never really get into that Acid Mother's freak out that we're all used to and loving. <laughs> so, you know, it's, 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 it's sort of an album of restraint for them, if you would, and it's cool to hear that. Because again, sort of like with the NC, you know, they're they're paying tribute, and it definitely shows a lot of respect for the song. Uh, really enjoyed it. Like I said, just the mellow intensity of this record, really damn good. Prophase music, pick it up. And the last one we got, Acid Mother's Temple and the Melting Proviso UFO double album, Live in Occident. This was a killer release. Killer. I only listened to part of this, but I mean, it's got all of the, you know, all of the Acid Mother's great, of course, Pink Lady Lemonade, Speed Guru, Astrological Overdrive, you know, Blue Velvet Blues. Phenomenal shape. And again, I won it on eBay. It was, with shipping, you know, under 20 bucks. That's a steal. <laughs> In my opinion, that's a steal. But also, very cool. Came off with some beautiful, clear, clear pink vinyl. Clear pink vinyl is my absolute hands down favorite. And I didn't know it was clear pink. Uh, from the pictures on uh, eBay, it looked like they were red. So when I got them and I, I took the records out, I was like, oh, beautiful surprise. Definitely beautiful surprise. Those are my finds. Well, my most of my finds. I got, I got some Goodwill finds I found in the one was really killer. One was like, whoo-hoo, couldn't believe it, but posted on Facebook. You guys probably already know, but the music has ended, so I am going to end it. Uh, and I just, you know, thank you all for watching. Uh, you know, Matt, thank you again for the trades. Definitely really cool to do that. And uh, all my new, new subscribers. New subscribers, you guys fucking rock. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'd watch me. <laughs> So, <clears throat> yeah, thank you all. Till next time.